The one thing you'll never be able to control is how those damn cards run out of the board. You'll never, ever, ever, no matter how hard you try, control that. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, people are just afraid of being different and of doing something that doesn't necessarily have a strict A to B narrative. So people are afraid. Sometimes they're they go too deep into mm. one thing and they're yeah. afraid of what they yeah. because they say, "Oh, well, when will I ever use this?" You know, why is this essential for me? I think that's su just such an awful lens. Yeah. Um, you you really do need to have breadth of experience mm. to know what you like, to know yeah. what you're good at. But you also have to be willing to work really, really hard. Mm. And I think that those th two things um, are not mutually exclusive. So a lot of people are like, oh, you know, well, in when it comes to poker, like, how do I get good quickly? And I was like, well, um, I studied you know, between seven and 10 hours a day yeah. for seven days a week. And this is what I do. And they say, no, but like, really, I said, no, but really, that's what I did. Yeah, yeah, um, and sure. they, they just, they want to, they want a shortcut. Same thing with writing. I yeah. mean, before I played poker, they want a shortcut. They want to know, oh, can I get, how do I get published in the New Yorker? I was like, I don't know. I was rejected for year after year after year. And I kept writing and kept submitting and kept writing for other magazines. And I, you know, I wrote for years before I got my first piece accepted. Yeah. That's how you do it. There's no, there's no shortcut. You actually have to work really hard. When someone is getting into that direction of, Hey, I don't have this under control any anymore, drugs, alcohol, porn addiction, whatever it is, or overeating. Um, mm. What would be your advice for this person that in that position My, in that situation yeah there's two things two things that i would i would say on that first is um go to what's free and what you can afford so uh, books and podcasts are really good think about think about it so i'm i'm charging people thousands of dollars to jump on and do my program and i gave up after reading a book that cost me 7.99 The book seven hundred ninety nine or seven ninety nine? No, no, seven ninety nine. Okay. So, so results don't take time; they take courage, right? Like I said earlier on, they take courage. That's all. I'm not going to fucking take this anymore. That takes courage to go into what comes after that. So, if you're really, really struggling, find a book that is going to help you out of that hole. So, if you're struggling with alcohol or smoking cigarettes, Alan Carr's easy way to control um, alcohol and to stop smoking permanently will really help you. Um, I have had so many people reach out to me uh, through my podcast and said, thank you. You've saved my life. I no longer drink. <laughs> like, I can't even get them into my program because they've already, they've just quit by listening to the podcast. Yeah. So, so, so do those things as well. Um, talk about it. Talk about it to your wife. That's very difficult, right? Very, very difficult, but you need to find someone you trust to talk about it. Okay. Um, if you listen to a podcast or you read a book and it touches you, reach out to them. Like you would not believe how many people in the past that I have helped or given people stuff for free because they just reached out to me and asked. And the reason that is, is because I, I was in that spot myself where I needed to reach out to people and ask a question. And, and I find you know, a lot of people will respond to you, you know, so that's really important as well. But what, what do you think? What are often the most common reasons when people blow off their stacks? Where does it come from? Um, um, there's, there's two levels of this. The, mm -hmm. the, there's this shallow level, the surface level, where we talk about discipline. And discipline, for me, the definition is being able to overrule emotions. I'm feeling this, but I'm still going to do X, Y, or Z because I know this is the best mm -hmm. decision right now. Okay. So and you have the, the, the conscious just to maybe elaborate yeah. a little more on that yeah. because I think a lot of players, you know, might not so be experienced. So basically the ability right. to zoom out, to detach yourself from that moment. It's like, okay, I still feel these emotions, but yes. you're still in charge to say, I know this is the long time winning play. Yes, emotionally, I would like to... Five bed jam, eight five suited in this motherfucker's yep. face, right? Yep, I love that. But we know 
all right we're gonna three bet, we're gonna three bet forward our nine eight suited here right yeah yeah exactly and it's the same muscle that we use for waking up in the morning and we feel like shit so we're not gonna exercise mm -hmm. or um oh i was really craving mcdonald's last night 9 p.m i was sitting at my friend's house and i got into a setting uh you know all my old habits came back when i go to my old town where i live with all my friends living bad life smoking weed getting mcdonald's and then you know gambling it on the poker apps and just going you know having a stupid dj night and uh, i really had to cut off you know a certain point where i had to say no like, I'm not going to do weed, not going to do McDonald's. I love to gamble with you guys, and that's about it, right? Yeah. I, I had to make a decision because I was feeling the sensations and I was feeling the urge, but I learned from all these years to, indeed, like you say, zoom out, accept that these feelings are there. They're okay, of course. You would like to join in on this degen madness, but that's not aligned with the goals that I have in my life right now. And that's a little bit deeper, but um, I think a lot of people especially poker players, they have a discipline issue. Mm. Discipline usually is placed upon you by an external source, boss, parents, teacher, whatever. Yeah. Now, yeah. already we know that parents, most of the time, didn't really teach poker players discipline. They were like, okay, I would love you parents, but fuck you, I'm going to play poker. Like, hey, boy, son, you may, maybe you should not do that poker thing. Maybe you should focus on school or whatever. No, dad, I'm sorry. Fuck you. I love you, but I'm not, not going to play poker. I'm sorry. Right? So there's already that certain rejection against externally placed discipline, so to speak, or authority figures around you that decide what you should do with your emotions, with your reactions to those emotions, right? As a poker player, we have given in to this urge of being independent and free and gambling, and it's easy to give in other urges as well, right? So the discipline that you learned, you have to learn outside of poker as well, not only within this poker world, you have to develop it like you yourself does, you burpees, crazy on this, all on the internet, every day, it's this madness, I respect it so much, kickboxing, running your business, uploading like a madman all over the internet, those, that muscle that you have, that's like Arnold Schwarzenegger motherfucking muscle, that's like, bang, right there, that's your discipline muscle, it's crazy, because for sure you feel you, when you wake up some days, you're like, fuck this sure. shit, Today, I'm not going to do it. You still do it, right? Because you've trained your muscles so many times over and over again by overruling your initial emotion by still doing it, meaning eventually your discipline muscle will be stronger than the emotional part of your brain. Yeah. That's just the common sense. And when you're in a situation with poker, you feel it, your brain be like, oh my God, this asshole. And you give it a second and then discipline muscle comes in and says, hold up. Let's make the right decision because we know the right decision. Okay. Mm. Let's calm down. And I, you show me a person who doesn't have their life in order and I will show you a bad poker play. Mm. Always. 100%. At least they might be super freak talents and do it for one or two years, but they'll go broke. Yeah, it falls apart. Can, 100%. It falls apart. What motivates you to think this way? Why do you say this? Mm. Or why do you think this? You know? And to, to go back to the core and, and, and uh, question why uh, this thought popped up, you know, in a very objective manner, yeah. you know, as a third party, not as a part of yourself. So like you said, detach, you know, and you zoom out and you look at your, your thoughts and actions this way. And then you kind of, it kind of makes it clear that you shouldn't feel this way, you know. Mm. And then it's, uh, it's just rational or logical for me, you know, when I zoom out and think of it, like, you know, you already knew that, you know, this variance evolved, right? Yeah. When you started playing, you know, you're better than him. You know that it doesn't mean that you're going to win today. Uh, you know, poker takes no prisoners, you know, there's no favorites. So, you know, why do you feel like you deserve to win? Yeah. That, that's very logical, right? So, obviously, then it's like, yeah, that's true. So, why do I feel bad? <laughs> you know what I mean? Then you just kind of stop feeling bad because it doesn't make sense, you know? Like, you just kind of program your brain this way, you know, and then brainwash yourself to a certain extent, you know? And that's what I think I brainwash myself a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For me, uh, I focus on the things I can control. This is like the advice I would say focus on the things that you can control. Mm -hmm. you you can control whether you got a good night's sleep. You can control if you ate well. You can control if you exercise. You can control uh, whether you meditated before you started grinding, if you stretched, whatever it might be, right? Those are things you can control. One thing you'll never be able to control is how those damn cards run out of the board. You'll never, ever, ever, no matter how hard you try, control that. So you can't ever change that, right? You can't ever change how you're going to run. If it's going to be good or bad or ugly, whatever it's going to be, you can't change that. So why waste any efforts? Why waste any emotion? Why waste any tears, whatever it might be. Yeah. Don't waste it on how those cards run out. That's why it's so important, like you say, bankroll management is so important. 
putting yourself in a spot where you're never going to devastate your bankroll, where you're never going to just lose them one day or one week because, yeah, you're, you don't know how those cards are going to run out. 